Okay, Melissa Carter, Virginia talked about food memories. So I've got to know your answer to this question. What is a favorite food memory for you? Well, you know, I've talked on the show before about how I was diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome at seven years old. I was just telling Jen off air that, you know, my son was in, is in first grade now. He had asked me, how was first grade for you? And I was like, oh, you know, it wasn't so good because I missed a lot of school. It was very painful. And the reason I say that is because that kind of, it, it changed my relationship with food because yeah. for me, food made me feel bad. Oh. And so, you know, that may be, you know, I tease a lot about, uh, you know, and I tease with Virginia about how I don't cook and it's not my thing. But, you know, looking back, I think it's because food mm -hmm. to me wasn't something that was a good thing. It was a bad thing. However, um, I think one of the other reasons, like I mentioned to Virginia, that I bake is because my favorite food memory is mom teaching me how to bake cakes. So being in the kitchen with my mother and just, I don't know, just the time with her. I think that for me, and I'm sure for everybody else, I mean, you talk about memories. Sometimes it's not about the food itself. It's about what you did or where you were to prepare it. Like, you know, how it made you feel to prepare it. And so it said, you know, we had a, a 70s, you know, ranch house with a big long kitchen. It wasn't a big square kitchen. It was rectangular. And uh, we'd always have to bump into each other and pass each other to go get the different ingredients and stuff. But my mother just put a stool down and had me sit there and we just talked and she walked me through baking a cake. And so from elementary school through high school, uh, I baked with her. And that was that to me, Bacon with Millie Pete was my favorite food memory. I mean, it's not just one. Red velvet cake was what she always made for my oh, birthday. Oh, wow. Because she, so red velvet cake wasn't made popular until uh, Jacqueline Kennedy would make it in the White House. And so my mother was so impressed by the Kennedys and she loved Jacqueline, I think, that she um, she would bake these red velvet cakes. And I said, well, I want that as my birthday cake. So every year she made me a red velvet cake for my birthday. So, Sweet. yeah. So that's I baking. Love that. baking I can just picture your, you and your mom in your seventies kitchen. <laughs> Was there like, Either mustard, yellow, mustard wasn't the green. It was the mustard countertop. I was going to say countertop, mustard yellow, or that like pea green. Right? We had the pea green plates. Of course, of course. We yes. had the ceramic pea the green plates, hip. but we had the mustard countertops. Absolutely, yeah. yes. I can picture it with y'all with your aprons <laughs> on, yes. flour everywhere. So oh, cute. What a great memory. So, I love that. So what about your memory? What's your so, favorite food memory? I have a great food memory. It's also with my mom and my brother in the kitchen. My mom, one year, this is mid eighties, got a fresh pasta maker for a gift. Ooh. I don't know if it was for Christmas. She got it, but she got really into making pasta from scratch with this mm. pasta maker. And I can just remember my brother and I with her, like, um, you know, creating the dough cause you made the, you know, the dough for the pasta and then you fed it through this machine and you could put different attachments to get different kinds of pasta to come out of it. And it would start pushing out and then we would get to slice it for the right length. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, we could make regular spaghetti or we would make linguine or she even made like oh, bow tie neat. pasta and it was all from scratch. Wow. Nice. Yeah. She doesn't do it anymore. I mean, it was like a phase in the, you know, she yeah. had a phase in the eighties and I just remember it being so much fun and I can picture it today and I can still smell it like the smells of that pasta and the pasta cooking and just how good it was to eat later and how fun it was that we were a part of making it. I'm sure we just made it harder for her in the kitchen. I'm I was about sure to we say. We actually really helped. Yes. <laughs> well, that's the thing, too. I think that, you know, I, I'm mindful. Uh, and I again, I think that's being an older parent. But I'm mindful of the fact that even though it would be faster for me to do things. And I am guilty so many times uh, because I'm, I'm, you know, like I mentioned, I'm the one, the plan, the grid. Like I and I like to keep time, keep on time and that kind of thing. So. There's so many times that I will do things and not include my son because it's faster. But then right. I'm mindful of the of that, and I'm like, no, wait a second, you got to slow down and let him help uh, because it, it is important for me for him to be an independent man in the kitchen. And so, like w for his birthday, because I, much like my mother, I make my son's cake every year. So I don't allow Katie to go to the store or her or her mother to go to the store to get his cake. I I make it at home uh, from scratch, 
and I I help I have him help me do it. So I'll have him crack the eggs, right? Have him always remember that. Yeah, even if it does take longer and it always makes a bigger mess. Like when yes. I'm in the kitchen with my kids recently, the girls and I made some homemade chocolate chip cookies mm. and oh my gosh, the kitchen was just destroyed <laughs> afterwards, but they had the best time. Yeah. You know, and then they're off to the next thing. Okay, bye mom, tell us when they're done. And I was <laughs> exactly. Like, they don't care in the anymore. kitchen looking around going, "What? Yeah. Well, how did this all ha- how did this tornado happen?" But in, in, love it. in 30 years, they'll they'll tell the story of baking chocolate chip cookies with mom even though in the moment. And that's the other thing is having the foresight to understand that in the moment the kid is not going to seem like they care. Like in the moment they'll they'll you yeah, know, they That's true. Yeah, you know, but but then uh, you have to remember that you did imprint something on them. Did I just, can, you know, did I tell my mother just how wonderful she was and how uh, wonderful she was in the kitchen at eight and nine and 10 years old at 15, 16, 17? No, but, no. Um, but that, yeah, those were something that, yeah, I don't forget. And I want to continue that with my son. So even for me, who is kitchen challenged, I understand the importance of no matter how busy you are, and even if you're not a great cook or a great baker, whatever it is, like, um, you know, even if it's just, you know, making uh, lemonade or whatever it is you do in the kitchen, something in the kitchen that is special between you and your child, I do, or your grandchild, I think is really an important, an important thing to do. Totally. And um, because we got the image of your mom's 70s kitchen, I'm just yeah. going to paint. The yes. 80s oh, kitchen yes. Picture. 80s. Okay. Yes. Um, there was wallpaper <laughs> on the wall, of course, because everybody had wallpaper in the 80s. We had a trash compactor. Oh, Do you yes. Remember those that yes. used to smush your garbage down. <laughs> Forgot. Yes. Yeah. And our hamster used to always get out of the cage and crawl behind there. So we'd have to take the whole <sighs> trash compactor out of the wall to find our little hamster. What was your hamster's name? Five Alette. Fivelet. Do you remember um that movie in the 80s American Tale? Yes. With the lead character that was Fivel. Yes. Well, we couldn't have Fivel because our hamster was a girl. So we had Fivelet. Fivelet. Okay, now it makes mm-hmm. sense. I was like, I so random. Okay, Fivelet, so yes. Bizarre. Um, but yeah, Fivelet used to get behind the trash compactor. And also in my mom's 80s kitchen was a telephone on the wall yes. with a real long cord. Yes. It would stretch across the whole length because we also had a long rectangular kitchen. And I remember my brother and I chasing each other or playing like gotcha last or whatever and getting tangled up in that phone cord. And the way you untangle is you had to ha- hold it up and let it spin, 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 spin. Because, uh, you know, that sometimes became my job. Hey, you know, when it was all like crunkled up and up, yeah. when it, when the cord is up toward the bottom of the phone, you know that it's really tangled. So unwind it. Yep. It was my job to stand there and just hold it and then hear the eh, 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 eh. <laughs> I'm telling you, these are only memories that people <laughs> our age are going to exactly. have. So the well, art of un- my kids don't know what a, <laughs> they would be like. Why did the phone have to have a cord? That's ridiculous. The, the art of doing that was, <laughs> was to hold it and to hold on the wall, hold the thing so it wouldn't make the eh, eh sound as you unwound it. Oh my gosh. Cause I had, you know, <laughs> I do a rabbit, rabbit hole here. But so, uh, you, we have a pool where I live. I live in a townhome community. We have a pool. We take advantage of the pool. And so this summer I thought, Oh, how cool would it be to get some underwater shots? That would be fun game. So I found an yeah. inexpensive camera online that takes underwater shots. So I sent one of those pictures to a friend of mine. And my friend said, oh, what kind of phone is that? I need that in my life. And I was like, it's not a phone. I got it. I said in the text, I got an old school camera. It's an like, actual <laughs> camera. It's an actual camera. With film in it. Oh. And you got to take it to the pharmacy, to the, you know, <laughs> to the photo lab to get the pictures printed out. And then you see how, how many hilarious. times you put your finger in front of the lens when you had yeah. to get your film developed. I took a vacation to Arizona a few years ago and I used an old school, you know, film, roll the film up in the uh, manual camera. Ooh. And I had to find there's like one place that you could send those film to get developed now. Like nobody I had to search. It. Nobody, nobody has the capacity to develop film anymore. Anyway. All right. Wormhole from your wormhole. Do you ever have a panic attack that like, Apple or, you know, Samsung or whoever your phone is with is going to all of a sudden like get hacked, disappear, and then all your photos will be gone. 
Well, I back those, them like, up. Heart palpitations. I back them up on Dropbox. So I, I they don't they, they don't sponsor them, but I oh I always back those photos up on another platform. Um, now why? Because I also thought, what am I going to do with them? Like, okay, someday this company is going to go out of business. <laughs> someday this storage company is going to go out of business. Right. Like I need to, it probably cost me $10,000 to print every photo, that every photo <laughs> that's in there. And right? then what it's am like I going to do salary. with it? Look, 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 Jen, <laughs> I've got a bin in my garage of photos from back in the, from elementary school through college, through my twenties that I don't know what to do with. They're not in photo albums. They're just loosely in there. And I keep thinking, oh, I've moved them eight freaking times. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to do something with it. What well, I'm going to do, why do I have Wendy Wilson's uh, third grade picture still in my bit? What am I going to You Wendy, might want it. Wendy you Wilson, bless her heart. It. She has passed on. She's no longer with us. And I still have her picture that she gave me in exchange. And, you know, because we used to give those little pictures, little itty bitty pictures yeah. in exchange. And I'm like, what am I doing? What what am I going to do with Wendy? Tracy Tyler? What am I going to do with Tracy Tyler's, you know, senior photo? What am I going to do with that? Maybe but I still have her funeral because you'll be the only <laughs> one that has it. <laughs> hey guys, look, look! I have the picture to put on her coffin. I mean, <laughs> I how mean, many <laughs> moves have all these pictures been through? Like I said, eight. I think I've in, a, in Atlanta. No, in Atlanta, I think I've moved eight times in my tenure here. But that doesn't include college. <laughs> And from college, I mean, I've moved these pictures. So anyway, to answer your question, Jen, who cares? Because the thing is, you're not going to keep those pictures for 50 I years. I think what I do need to do, though, to like, this is, these oh. are the dumb things that keep me up at night. If I wake up in the middle of the night, I'm like, oh, what if Apple goes under? What if, what if all the baby <laughs> pictures are gone? I never, I haven't made baby books for my children. I'm a horrible parent because they just live on the internet. And I'm like, they'll, they'll be fine. That'll be fine. No, it's not going to be fine. I need to make baby books. And then I get <sighs> all overwhelmed by it. And I'm like, I don't have time and I don't know how I'm going to do it. And I just, I just start losing Kate, it. Katie's friend, one of Katie's friends, I thought was brilliant back in the day. She would make a, a picture album, you know, through, I don't know, Apple or Shutterfly or who, again, none of yeah. these are sponsors. Yeah, her real organized and, friend who's on top of everything. Well, I hold hate on. her friend <laughs> already. <laughs> So every year she, and she had two sons and she would do that. So I thought I'm going to be like her. I'm going to be just like her. Right. And this is at the time that Katie and I were expecting something. Oh, you know what? I got this sandal because Katie sure as hell is not going to do it. So <laughs> I'm like, I'll do this. And so I started the baby book that it was, it was the zero year book, right? Cause yeah. I was going to do every year of Mr. Carter's life. I still have zero year up on Shutterfly is one of my projects because I'm missing <laughs> one picture that I've that I, six years later, I have forgotten to go back and put that picture in and had, did I do book one, two, three, four, five, six? No, no. See, this is why we're friends because <laughs> I still have zero okay with me. Cause I thought, you have oh, been like, I have been doing it every single year and it's all done and all on the shelf and they all match and it's got the same color branding. I would have been like, I hate you. We can no mind, longer do the frenzy together. Am my <laughs> In my mind, it's there. <laughs> and somehow it doesn't translate into the, I don't manifest it in the universe. But anyway, but yeah, so all that has to do with memories of your kitchen. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> right. So here's another question for you because yeah. family, our family histories are so closely woven with food, right? It's, yep. it's where we're from. You know, those traditions that are passed down through generations are so important. So I wanted to know a treasured family recipe from the Carter's kitchen. Was there something Gosh. that came from your grandparents? Was there, you know what I, you know, I'll be honest and say that I don't have an answer because I didn't care at the time. Mm. So, um, because I, I, you know, my sister cared and she was much better. My brother and sister actually are much better cooks than I am. Um, and my sister probably has some cherished stuff, but I will tell you that's what's cherished from my mother. Um, you know, and well, my father, my father didn't cook much, but he could cook and he would cook catfish. So anytime we had catfish, that was my father in the kitchen, which was really fun to watch him. He would take his shirt off because he was a sweater. So he had his shirt off and a towel around his shoulder and he was cooking catfish. And it was really cute. So cute. Um, but mom, one of the things she did, because she was very old school. She was born in 1929. So she's the age of most people's grandparents uh, or was. And she, for my son, when he was born, she had been a part of etiquette. She was like homeowners associate, you know, not homeowner association, but like a home makers association. Like mm -hmm. she was president of homemakers associate, whatever. So she drew out uh, on this big piece of paper, she would write things for my son and how to paint 
because she was a painter. And then she would, you know, and then she had this big thing and I laminated all these things, right? I got a laminating machine, I lam- but I have it Cute. somewhere near me, but it's mom's handwriting and it's a big dinner plate. And it shows my son where all the silver were supposed to go, which cup is his, you know, the, the place setting she showed it. And I'll have to find it here in a second, but she, yeah. It's like she, Millie it, Pete's cotillion class. Exactly. And so I, and, love I it. and she gave it to me and I, I think she was just sketching it out and she gave it to me and she was just, you know, not, th- but I kept it and I laminated it and I, and it's big enough. She put it on a big enough piece of paper to where he could put it on the table and put the plate there and put the silverware there. So to answer your question, it's not a recipe, um, but it's just her, the importance of, and Virginia said this too, the importance of being able to serve and know what you're doing. So having a serving set um, and knowing where to put the plates, I think is what for me is, is the, the lesson I got from my mother more so than the actual recipe. And she'd be so proud and her mother would be so proud and her mother would be so proud that that's what, that's what, that's yes. what landed with you and with yes. your son and that it's gone through the generations. I love they're, that. They're going to be thank, thank God, because she's not real good at it. So I'm glad that she got something. That's what they're saying right now is collectively like, <laughs> whoo, maybe she'll well, be okay yeah. after all. Ooh, all right. <laughs> She's not, she's not quite the girl that we thought she'd be, but you know what? She's going to be all right. Well, she's going <laughs> to she's gonna make it. She's going to make it. All right. <laughs> she so can keep one, the family name. One of our family traditions came from my grandmother, Dee Dee, um, Dee. whose name was Dorothy Constance. And she was actually born in Great Britain. So she was dual citizenship. Her father was an American and her mother was a Brit. And um, so she had a couple of of recipes that got passed down through the generations. One are these um, pastries called Maids of Honor. Doesn't that sound quite British? It does. Um, and they're so delicious. They're like a cake filled, uh, like a pastry bottom with like a raspberry jam. And then on top of it, a c- cake filled And then they were iced on top. And so they're very complex to make. But Dee Dee made those every year. And um, I've not seen that on the Great British Baking Show, but I would like to. Because I'm fascinated how in Britain... Uh, like you said, that there's the, the fruits and fruits are incorporated, you know, into food and baking more so than I don't use fruits in my baking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm not really a baker. You know, like we talked about, I, I like the cooking aspect much more than baking because it is so much more precise. And I have tried to recreate the maids of honor a lot of different times. It's usually around Dee Dee's birthday in January. I'll try to make maids of honor. Um, and my cousin Casey is always saying like, well, you got close. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but you know, but it, like in a sweet and endearing way, like nobody can quite make them the way that she made right. them. And she used to make them in these little antique tins. So I can't find the tins anymore. I've looked online, I've looked on Etsy, and they're not really made in the same way. And the only ones that I've found have been on like you know, swap meat type websites where they look Mm -hmm. rusted and you probably shouldn't put food in it. Right. Right. (laughs) But she made them in these little, um, pretty little tins anyway. So that's a recipe that I'm trying to recreate, but you know, now everything is silicone and different shapes and it's, it, it doesn't really, maybe I'm just not a great baker. It doesn't turn out in the same way. And she did it all by memory. So that is a regret that I have is that I didn't ask her to write it down oh. and show me step by step. And I didn't ask her to write down the recipe. I mean, she was somebody that just had it in her head. Wow. And she would just make them every year around the holidays. So I'm going to try to wow. make some maids of honor again this year. And I'll share them with you and see what, see what you think. If you Absolutely. give me the stamp of approval. And the other thing she made was this cake um, that we make still. And my mother, mother has gotten very good at making it. And honestly, it's just in our family called the cake. It Mm. has, um, like nuts and raisins and all kinds of things in it, but it's a holiday cake and it's delicious. And, um, yeah, there's not even a name for the flavor. It's just in our family called the cake, but I do have that exact recipe because my mom learned it, memorized it. And then I've made my mom write it down. Well, I, you know, memories. Yes. Well, I mean, I remember our church, um, uh, it released a recipe book for fundraisers. It seems like back then there's a lot more recipes that were fundraising and stuff. And I regret not having a copy of that now. Right. Mm-hmm. Cause at the time I didn't care, 
But now it's like, oh, I would love recipes from the 70s, recipes from the 60s, recipes, um, because to your point, I it, it, the, things have changed. And in, in, in baking, like I, uh, I noticed that it does, you know, the pan changes how the cake turns out. Mm -hmm. If you use a mix, let me tell you, it's something I can't stand. And that's the mixes that are talk about being super soft or what is it super soft like if you go to get a cake recipe or a cake uh, uh, box at the at the grocery store it talks about how it's going to make it super soft or super you know and those have like pudding in the mix to make it super soft but the problem is depending on the pan the center doesn't cook i've thrown away more of those cakes that i want to just do. so that's why i like doing them from scratch because I know what's in you're them. in control. Yeah. Because I'm in it's control. better ingredients. But things have too. changed. Yes. Because that is not the cake mix that you could buy from Giant Foods back in the 70s. They put right. something else in it to try to help. And it and it kind of throws it off. So anyway. Um, so I, I, I do regret not getting some of those recipes. Because I bet they're so much better than what you could get today. And every family has their stories, you know, wherever your heritage is from, food comes right along with that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, my husband, um, on one side, uh, his grandparents um, immigrated from Cuba and Puerto Rico. So there's these great recipes of black beans and rice that sit all day and, you know, the black beans mm -hmm. simmer and all these amazing spices. And then on the other side, his mom is from Illinois, very Midwestern. And one of our first Thanksgiving together, he said, my mom mom's going to bring the salad. And I was like, Oh, cool salad. I checked that off the list. Don't need to get the greens. And it showed up and it was like jello jello salad. Yes. And I was some like, of those are really good. I, I was like, that's not salad. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, you know, when you said it, you mom know, would, but, mom but for Christmas, it's mom a, made a, it's a thing. Salad. Yes. yes. It's in there. It's in their family history. It's part of what's on the table. And if it's not there, something is missing for them. So, uh, you know, I have learned not to scoff at that salad, but I've also learned to buy lettuce <laughs> for a different salad. And then we can have the jello salad. Oh, well, no. That cracked it, me up. I was no, like, oh, what's what? funny <laughs> is for you, it's going to be like, uh, well, Jen's bringing the salad and other people are like, oh, but she, that's the vegetable salad. We, yeah, that's we gotta a, uh, because mom would make it put a, 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 a jello salad that was three tiered. Yeah, and yeah, would have like a sour cream kind of thing in between the layers. Anyway, my sister tried to recreate it's funny you say that. I forgot about that. So, my sister, once my mother started get, falling ill, uh, tried to make that and never it never set right, you know, like she mm -hmm. she was frustrated because she was trying to figure it out. Because Aren't there like chunks of pineapple in it yes. somewhere, there's and... chunks of pineapple on one level, and yeah. then on mom's other level, there I think there were walnuts and there's nuts in it, and then there, how, yeah, and then she would mix the nuts into the this this cream anyway i mean it's so good <laughs> i'm telling you you got to go but, back to columbia tennessee and I get know. that sunday school recipe cookbook from the church because I, I bet it's got a whole bunch of salad recipes i in know it. <laughs> but not the salad you like not the kind of <laughs> salad i was looking for for that thanksgiving <laughs> spread but that's okay hilarious <laughs>